South Africa has been described as the world in one country, and nowhere is this more true than the Cape Province, giving us the chance to see TFHP's steam fleet in a wide variety of scenic locations. Most featured trains are chartered by Steam Local Safari Tours or Steam and Safaris. We begin with a trip on the two-foot gauge Port Elizabeth to Aventure line, which traverses the picturesque Langkloof region. We'll concentrate on the section between Compagnie's Drift and Lotharwater at the western end of the line. Steam services on this line are operated by Apple Express Limited and the locos are based at Humewood Road Depot, Port Elizabeth. Loco number 131 is a class NGG16 Garrett, a type which has been indigenous to this line for many years. As 131 completes its shunting at heights, we'll move further west to Jobertina. Here at Jobertina, we find NG15 number 124 in Apple Express livery as it prepares to make a return journey to Lotharwater.
Examples of NGG16 and NG15 can now be seen in Great Britain, including the two NGG16s, which are now in service on the Welsh Highland Railway. As 124 begins its long journey home to Port Elizabeth, we'll leave the two-foot system. In South Africa, the standard gauge is 3 feet 6 inches, be it remote branch line or busy main line. The Cape is well known for its photogenic branch lines. In steam days, the Class 19D482 was the standard branch line engine. Nowadays, the Class 35 diesel is the designated traction. One of the most impressive branch lines runs from Aliwal North to Barclay East in the northeastern corner of the province. The line has eight reverses to help it gain height over a relatively short distance. Six of these reverses are located at the line's western end between Lady Grey and the summit at Drisley, which at over 6,500 feet is the highest in the province. We'll follow this 19D halt mixed train on its return trip from Lady Grey to Motgop. Climb from the new road reveals the steam amphitheatre by reverses 5 and 6.
The return trip isn't quite so spectacular, but it does offer some pleasant scenes, this time from track level. As the 19D returns to Lady Grey, we'll make our way to the Northern Cape with its typical Karoo landscape. This 25NC is approaching the Northern Cape provincial border with a southbound passenger train. We'll see it again as it crosses from the Free State at Norvalspont and at Jobert on the approaches to the Karoo town of Colesburg. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here at Achtertang, this 15AR is running tender first to Colesburg to collect a passenger train bound for Springfontein in the Free State. As 1850 makes its way north, we'll move to the Western Cape for a look at some steam action on the Cape Main Line. The TFHP Western Cape Depot is located here at Del Yosefat, and steam is often seen side by side with Spoornet diesel and electric locos. Totally separate from Spornet is Transnet's Metro Rail Division, which operates EMU suburban services in and around South Africa's larger conurbations. A few travel tips for Metro Rail passengers. As the 16D Pacific backs onto its train for a fast non-stop run to Cape Town, we'll climb aboard. The remainder of this programme features the highly scenic garden route and Little Karoo, stretching from Mossel Bay through George to Neisner, north through Camphor to Oatshorn, 
and east towards Kliplat. Early morning at George. This Class 7A is being prepared for an early morning charter train to Neisner. To the west, at Mossel Bay, this GB Garrett is shunting in the harbour area before taking an early morning mix train to Hartenbos. For around 40 years, the GB class monopolised the Barclay East branch, which we saw earlier, until replacement by class 19D. Bound from Neisner, this Class 24 doubleheader is seen crossing the lagoon with an early morning mix train.
Both of these locos have a long association with the Cape. They were together at Toes River for working the Ladysmith branch prior to its closure in 1981. The second loco, 3675, was once something of a celebrity, having been originally named Bartholomew Diaz to commemorate it as the 2000th loco to be delivered to South Africa by the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow. At Wilderness, our train crosses the regular George to Neisner passenger service. On arrival at George, we find the Cess 2080 acting as station pilot. The locos at George are subshedded from the TFHP depot at Forby. They have regular duties on the Neisner branch, plus occasional charter work which can take them far and wide. While we await the return of the charter train from Neisner, there's time for a brief visit to the Otaniqua Transport Museum, which has been developed in the former goods shed at George.
Whilst George is the operational centre of the garden route, the rail hub for the Little Karoo is Oatshorn. Here we see this GEA Garrett and 14 CRB being prepared for a southbound journey towards Camphor. Camphor, we make the acquaintance of the Little Karoo's best known residents. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Garrett does some shunting while awaiting the passage of a northbound diesel hauled freight.
the freight passes and the garret, now alone, can continue its journey. We end this program with some scenes of the Oatshorn to Kliplat line. This 14 CRB is westbound and will reach Oatshorn around dusk. Early morning by the famous Red Wall near Sneeberg. This pair of 24s are eastbound. We'll follow as far as the S curves beyond Vondeling. Although most of this programme was filmed quite recently, we can't be sure how many of the steam scenes are now repeatable. The steam infrastructure is vanishing, and since 2001, TFHP no longer receives technical and operational support from Spornet.
On a positive note, specialist tour operators and enthusiast groups are developing new and exciting programmes, still giving us much to enjoy now and into the future.